Hey guys, happy new year. And I know it's a little late, but Merry Christmas. The little guy's got lights on, but you can barely see it. So let me shut it off and put it away. Christmas is over now. Hope you guys got lots of gifts for Christmas. And welcome to RC Talk. Uh, a lot of people have been telling me that uh, they miss RC Talk and they want to talk. They want to chit chat and talk about stuff. Uh, either hear me chat or other people chat. So um, um, Dave is going to join me soon. Chris from GCM Racing might jump in also, but he's actually uh, working right now uh, nine o'clock and he's working with uh, CNC machines. Um, and making a lot of noise. So if he does join in, he's going to show us uh, uh, how the machine works. Hopefully he will. Uh, and Dave from Radio Control Patrol is going to be in uh, in in a few. So I don't know when he's going to be in, but we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, one of the thing I got from uh, Chris at GCM Racing, uh, he did a video a little while back, and he actually showed this guy. So I picked this up from him. Um, he said he wasn't going to use it. He ordered it to see what it looked like. So I picked it up for him and uh, gave it to my little guy, Sebastien. That's with uh, my uh, my tent. So uh, hopefully in the winter or in the summer, we'll be doing uh, some videos with this. But this little military truck uh, from Banggood um, and a bunch of other places have it also. Um, it's four by four. It's not bad, uh, but to me, it is a toy. And for the price, uh, some places are selling forty dollars Canadian. Some places a little bit higher, uh, but uh, it's pretty well made for a nice little toy. The steering is not proportional, so it it just goes on or off. Uh, Sebastian, when he actually used it, he looked at me funny. He goes, "Did I break it?" Because when he actually turn turn it. It makes a lot of noise because it just goes and it stays there. Um, so I said, no, no, it's normal. There is a lot of slack, um, but it, it is it is what it is. You get what you pay for. Uh, the leaf, uh, it is on leaf springs, four leaf springs. It's kind of cool how they've done it, small little tiny dry shaft. Um, it, it's, it's pretty well made for a toy grade. Um, some people are actually upgrading these. Uh, putting uh, a different engine, different ESC, and actually changing the servo to actually get proportional steering. Um, but to me, uh, I won't do it. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, battery is up in here. And um, I'll put a link at the end of the, this video in the description. I'll put a link for uh, this at Banggood's. Um, but the battery's in here. Come to the battery. Uh, nice little tiny remote. It's written military truck on it. It's kind of cool. Not a lot of adjustment. Well, no adjustment, just on off. Um, and it comes with a USB charger uh, to charge up the battery. So it's up to your choice to use these or your uh, uh, battery charger that you would have with your normal RCs. Um, what's kind of cool is that the mirrors actually come in and out. So they, it's kind of gives it a little realism. Um, bed is deep, but it is kind of a very small truck. The leaf spring are to me pretty cheap. If you, uh, do fall uh, off a big rock or something. You are going to end up breaking something. I was noticing that uh, these, what holds onto the leaves, one is actually cracked uh, right from the uh, shipping or warehouse or whatever when it was made. Uh, I guess somebody tightened the screw a little bit much, uh, too much. Uh, it's got steel rails. Um, some cool little things, but it's it's a neat little truck. Let me put that away. What to talk about now? Ah, let's do a quick unboxing. Of 
Chris at GCM. Chris is my buddy. Uh, he uh, gave me something. So it's a little gift from him to me. Uh, just before the um, just before Christmas, actually. Uh, I haven't done anything with it. I'm waiting for my servos to come in so I can actually install it. But let me show you what it is. Maybe I should take another camera. I'll take my other little camera like that I can get closer in and show you guys what it is. It's in the box. Sounds like metal. What could it be? And here I am just wasting time talking, chit-chatting, waiting for Dave to get here. Let's switch camera. Okay. This thing is so cool. So this is a Boss stainless steel feed plow. A couple of things that came with it. Get the rest of the stuff out. Uh, post. I'm sure there's nothing else. Okay. Get rid of some boxes. So it actually came with these guys. I was wondering what they were for until I realized that there was holes here. And they're actually for the plow. Nope, that one didn't go in all the way, I guess. There we go. So this is really neat in a sense. And it's got a big kick-ass harness. This is what goes on the truck uh, on your uh, CX-10. So this is an aluminum one. Um, take off your bumper and put this on. And there's place here for two servos. So in here also was just uh, servo savers. So I ordered myself some servos um, and I still don't know what truck I'm going to put it on because if I put it on my SEX10, I have a problem is that I'm running out of channels. On my SEX10, I got my, uh, my throttle, my steering, my lights, my dig, my winch, and that's about it. So I got five channels right now and it's just a six channel. So uh, that's on um, the... Um, on the fly, fly sky, I think it is the remote uh, hack remote, so I can pretty much do anything I want. I can go up to eight channel, so I'm debating on ordering an eight channel for this, or just taking a spare radio that I have and taking a second receiver. And if I adjust the plow, I'll adjust. I'll adjust it, especially with the with the V plow. Uh, I'll just adjust it. With, uh, with with the second remote, and then I can plow. Going up and down, I'm actually gonna use the winch. The winch actually attaches right here. So um, from my truck to here, the winch will just bring it down and up. So cable gonna go up, come up here, or go through here. There's a hole. This, I am not sure what this is. A lot of weight and it's bent metal but there's nothing no holes no nothing so i don't know so this is rick's plow so if you guys want to plow this guy does a lot of plows you can find it uh, on um, facebook rick's plow service um so i got some stickers here and some stuff so because i have a server uh, a mount for an SCX10. The only one I'm thinking of putting it on is, is on my SCX10. I only own one of them. Uh, I do have the Jeep, but it's a different. Uh, I don't have this kind of mount, and the frame is much, much wider. 
So this is going to be real cool. Let me just check something real quick. Uh, I'm just checking right now to see if anybody's on and chit chatting. Oh, there it is some people. So, Kagan, uh, sorry if I screw up your last name. Uh, Mech Kitnikik, Dating Frank, nice to see you. Your hair is looking as shaggy as mine. Yeah, I know. My wife wants me to get a haircut. So let me just change camera real quick so I can chit chat to you guys. Do settings. I got to set up the, the other thing. Yeah, my wife um, wants me to uh, get a haircut. My hair is way shorter usually. Uh, and But my son actually says he liked it. So uh, <laughs> my wife goes, no. So it was funny. Yeah, I got another box the way uh, CCXRC Tony for uh, CCX Aussie or she's there. Um, I'll put a link for you guys in the chat uh, to actually come on if you guys want to come on and chit chat. Let me know if the link works or doesn't work. Um, yeah, that is a sweet plow. I uh, can't wait to put it on. Um, but I'm again, I'm waiting for my servos to actually come in. So once that's in, uh, we're going to be able. Uh, to get things done. So that is sweet for a plow. I need to set up my settings or my camera a different way so I can switch back and forth. Just hold with me for a sec. Like that I can see the Nick Kit Trick, no worries. Hey, we got RC Spark Studio. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Bumblebee video, very good video, and I love that um, uh, that module that you made for the sound. So when you play music through your speakers, it just like it uh, the whole thing goes with it. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> and uh medic started a second youtube channel uh it's a reboot uh youtube channel so if you guys are not subscribed to that one yet go ahead and subscribe to it <clears throat> and uh he he had some fun outside in the snow with the, his little guy uh, today or yesterday i'm not sure when but it, by the time he gets to do the, the editing it's different so uh uh, he had some fun with him. They buried him up to his head and all that. So uh, it's a lot of fun um, playing with the little guy outside in the snow. Well, that is unique and entertaining. Um, uh, that truck, uh, especially the paint job that you got the other guy get to do. And uh, some guys are just crazy. Uh, I got a couple different paint jobs here I want to do. And um, it's just... Uh, I'm not a painter, but I like trying. Uh, my problem is I can't paint during the winter, so I don't have a heated shed, so it's kind of hard to do. So, well, <clears throat> thanks for stopping by, Medic, and saying hi to everybody. So, RC Talk. Let me come back to RC Talk and stop talking about the plow real quick. Uh, RC Talk, I'm going to try to get it uh, going again uh, and get some special guests in and talk about, uh, hopefully more people will jump in again. Um, when I was doing it often, uh, a lot of people ended up coming in and, and chit-chatting. Uh, and it's fun when we get a lot of people, we start talking about debates and um, talking about different things. Uh, about RC and our experience and what we like about it. Um, it's the people, uh, the people that you meet, the people you get to help and the people that helps you out. You're out there on the trails, you're having fun and your truck breaks down. 
Well, 90% of the time, somebody brought two or three trucks with them. So you can actually take the other truck. For, for, well, the people just offer, here, take my truck. Uh, I do it all the time. I usually go on the trail and I bring uh, four or five trucks, even though I'm just me and my son. Uh, he's eight now, so he's having a lot of fun. But uh, it, it's fun on the trail to um, share. And uh, they're pretty good moments, and uh, especially with the kids and family. Uh, if your wife just comes and just walks beside you and it's just a walk in the woods, it's family. Uh, you can do it in the winter also, take a skidoo trail and just walk down the trail. So it's kind of fun. But I'm RC Talk. I'm going to try to uh, come back and uh, do RC Talk every week, uh, Thursday. I'm going to do it around 9 or 9.30. Um, thinking 9.30 is going to be better. Uh, I found 9 o'clock today was kind of uh, putting me uh, too much in a rush. So... Hey, Frank, didn't Chris say he had it? Yes, uh, Chris does have a spray booth. The problem with me and uh, GCM Racing is that he's um, about 45 minutes outside of Ottawa that way, and I'm about 45 minutes outside of Ottawa that way. So when I go to his house or when he comes to my house, we got about an hour and a half drive. So uh, that's three hours of the day gone. Uh, so if you drive there and back. Um, and sometime he's not at his house uh, for the spray booth. So, uh, but I am going to try to use my dinner garage. Sometimes he does heat it up. Uh, and, uh, he doesn't like it as much, but um, I'm going to try to convince him to go there and uh, spray some stuff. Uh, like I mentioned, Chris from GCM Racing is actually at work and he's um, uh, making a lot of noise. So he said, if I jump in, it makes too much noise. So I told them, all, well, don't worry about the noise. Just come in, mute yourself, and just show us uh, how you machine uh, the stuff and, and how things work uh, when you do some stuff. Because Chris is uh, owner of GCM Racing, but he does a lot of his parts, a lot of the machining of, of his bead locks, of uh, some of the transmission cases, some of uh, the uh, transfer case. Uh, a lot of that he machines actually here in Ottawa. Um, and people think it's made in China or whatever. No, it's not. It's Canadian made, made with good aluminum and all that. So uh, it's it's pretty good. So Jason uh, Wright, love to see a live feed. Hey, no problem. He says he can't jump in, jump in because he's just jump in to say hi, and uh, he'd love to jump in. Have a good day, sir. I'll be you'll be waiting for the next. And and uh, he says he's a huge fan of RC Sparks. I think a lot of people are a huge fan of RC Sparks. Uh, he started this. Um, I don't know if he's the first one that started it, but uh, uh, RC Adventures. He did a lot of uh, uh, a lot of RC's uh, videos uh, about adventures, and not standing in front of the camera what he did is uh, actually put the camera down and take the truck go forward and make it look like it was a real adventure i've made a bunch of those videos also they're time consuming and they're fun oh rc spark studio wants to say something a question go ahead ask a question or jump in also you can jump in just like last time you know what you did i can actually put the link again in case you missed it earlier. Aha, ha, very good question. So his question says, uh, what do you think about clone model being more readily available and accepted user around the world? These used to be a stigma about it. Do you think they still exist? <laughs> I think people are more, um, a lot of people try to, because it's so expensive today to, to, to live and to, um, uh, to buy stuff. Uh, a lot of people are looking at their pocketbooks. Uh, true RC people uh, like me are probably going to stay with the name brand. Uh, I'm going to try to withhold and not buy those uh, knockoffs 
Uh, I know on the the little Revo, there's a bunch of other ones also that uh, it looks like the Twin Hammer. Uh, I know that one exists and it, they're cheap. Uh, no, I got a real Twin Hammer. Uh, it's a used one I picked up, but I just held up and I like to encourage uh, the people that actually manufactured it. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people are more worried and they're, they're not um, true to the name brand, I guess it would be. Uh, so it's, oh, there's Chris. He muted his microphone. Hey, Chris, thanks for jumping in. So Chris from GCM Racing, he'll do present you and I'll talk to everybody. There he is. And Tony CC from CCXRC. So you're machining some stuff. Cool. Hey, Tony. Hey, how's it going? Hank. Hey. Oh, those are from your transfer case, I think, eh? Cool. DJ Medic says, hi, Chris. What's up, Chris? So uh, Chris is machining some stuff. I don't know if he can hear us a lot. Yeah, those for, are from his transfer case that goes right behind the transmission. He's working on right now. Hey, it's 9.23. What are you doing still at work? I guess when you're an owner, you don't, uh, there's no time for you. What's nice with that transfer case is when you buy it, you can actually uh, install it right or left. So if you want to hang it to the right or hang it to the left, you can actually get it done. Kagan is downloading the program to join in. Cool. Oh, Tim Hortons, Canadian favorite. And he's got the big CNC machine in front of him. Usually you keep the door closed and uh, there's a lot of water in there. And uh, that's a pretty big machine, but it uh, it makes a lot of noise. So he's setting up some, uh, some stuff in there. Just close the door and then the machine starts. Yeah, the owners never sleep. There it goes. The machine is hard at work. And uh, that machine is kind of cool. I've been there lots of time. And I told Chris I want to do a little video of uh, put a GoPro in there and something and, and just see the machine work uh, and do its work, especially when it actually goes and, and grabs the um, – it just goes and grabs a blade. Uh, you don't even have to change anything. Everything is automated. So it's kind of cool. Well, thanks, Chris. That's awesome. Let me go back to uh, me and we can talk to other people. Stop presenting. Hey, Dante. And hey, Tony. Tony, you can unmute your mic now. We have Dante. I don't think I've uh, talked to you uh, in the past. Or, yeah, I think we did. I think you've been on before. Oh, I don't hear you. I see your lips moving, but uh, there's nothing coming out. Oh. Mike, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Is there an echo? Nope, no echo. Okay, sweet. Yeah, it's been a while. I was on, uh, I think, when you first started, but uh, uh, it's been a while. Cool. Yeah, yeah. When, when I first saw your name, it didn't ring a bell, but then I started looking at your face. I go, yeah, you've been on before. I've seen you before. Yeah, it's cool. Cool. Okay, uh, DJ Medic is leaving. He says, thanks for the chat. Uh, he's on Dad Patrol. <laughs> chat to okay. you later. See you later. Cool, and we have Tony. How's it going? Doing good. Let's go to you. So you're in your new them. setup, your new studio. Who, me? Yeah. 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 Everything's kind of up here, so I figured I'd I'd work on some stuff that I want to get to while uh, while I listen in. 
but we lost power sense. and everything because it snowed, you know, here in Virginia Beach, which doesn't happen often. So it took me a little while to get things reset up once I got the alert that said the tank is live. And so I'm like, oh, I got to hurry up and get up and uh, <laughs> try and reset things up. I had no problem. I, I, so, so I saw your unboxing, though. That looks awesome. And uh, you're a little. Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy little plow, this thing here. So how he's done this, it's kind of, he's got aluminum here, and this is, uh, I believe it's metal or uh, a black aluminum, but it, it looks like pla uh, um, a piece of wood, but it's actually bent, but it's on, on a concave shape. It's kind of cool uh, how he's done that. And then this is all machined uh, aluminum, uh, lots of weight here. Uh, I'm not sure why these are here. Uh, the blade uh, actually has a lot of weight to it. Uh, these just add uh, to the weight. But this actually, the, this whole bracket goes onto the truck. So once I receive my servos, um, I think I'm going to do what I said is use a second remote to actually adjust the plow because you can actually go with the plow. You can set it up. Uh, you, you can set up on an angle. So you can go one in and then just take the other one out or actually do a V plow. So it's kind of cool mm -hmm. what you can do with this thing. But you need two servos. Uh, and like I'm saying, I'm running out of channels on my uh, on my remote. winch off though, right? So that's one you can gain back. The what? You'd have to take your winch off though, right? In order to install that. Yeah, well, I don't have to take it off because my, well, actually, my winch is actually inside my body. Uh, uh, how I installed my winch is actually, let me get the truck. Good thing it's close by. So, my winch, I have a special bumper, but my winch is actually inside the truck. Okay. I actually installed a, um, Get this body You're just on. coming out of the front of the bumper, then. Yeah. So for me, it's perfect to, for me to use this winch. Sorry if the camera's moving a lot. So I'm gonna try to do this with two hands. In other words, holding the camera, holding the light. So I made a steel plate there. You can see it's rusted. But my winch is actually right behind the battery tray. Mm -hmm. So no mod done or anything. I put the battery tray on top. Sorry. I put the battery tray in the front and on top. And then the, the winch, the one-tenth winch, actually fits right underneath the battery. So when I saw that, I said, hey, perfect. It just hides right in there. And I don't have to put the winch on the bumper. So this is going to be perfect for me to actually use a plow. And let me switch camera again. So like that, I don't have to move the camera a lot. And put my little truck away. And so that's the one you're thinking about putting it on or you, you're unsure? No, that's the one I'm going to put on because the plow actually comes with a bumper mount, uh, a black bumper mount. And this one is for the SCX-10. Right on. So uh, unless I get another bumper mount for the Jeep, it would have been cool to see on the Jeep. Uh, but I, I would have to manufacture uh, something new to actually mount it onto the Jeep also. So let me put that away and come out with it. New toy. So some of you seen what I've done. And Tony, this is what you needed today. I know, man. I tried to buy them at Hobby Town. They only had them that size. <laughs> Maybe okay. they had them a little bigger. I think they had the two three eighths, but or no, the three three eighths. They'd go for like a yeah. Revo. So these skis are hard. great hobby skis. Um, so uh, I think they were 3D printed. I'm not sure what they were, but they were uh, a clear, uh, clear plastic or a white plastic kind of clear. 
Um, originally, I had rims on there. I remember that. My slash 4x4. Four four, that's what I put it on last year. I didn't have a 2x4. But I did take off the front dry shaft last year. But last year, because of the depth, I could not put the skis directly onto the shaft. But this year, uh, somebody said, well, what, get rid of those and just put directly on the shaft. So I said, well, I'll try because I, on the 4x4, it didn't fit. So the only thing I had to do is, is drill the hole a little bit bigger and actually just use directly. And I took the hex off. And then I put the bolt right on. Nice. The only thing is, it does go and it hits my bumper. But gravity pretty well works. So if you jump with it, see? If you jump with it, like the, the one you'd buy for, I think they're 30 or $40, they stay stiff. Yeah. But this one actually, you, you, gravity works. So if you jump with it or whatever, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to make a video with it. I just got to find a cameraman because rear and i like to <laughs> i did it in front here and i hit the snowbank boom dead on uh but like you notice tony if there's too much snow you can't go nowhere yeah. and even this if you got a foot of snow even though i got panel tires if the snow is very fluffy yeah we have really fluffy snow it won't go nowhere it has to be packed snow and wet snow and then it's perfect and it's fun to drive and this body was actually given to me, all painted and everything from a friend in Ottawa. And it's uh, um, Body Works uh, that actually painted this. And Looks I good. just love it. It just, it looks nice. good. It's the Hummer. It's Proline Hummer, um, short course truck body. And it's just sweet. I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. Hummer by Proline? Yeah, I think, I believe it's Proline. Some, uh, he replied on somebody's comment on my uh, Facebook page. But uh, this thing is fun, and it just looks it looks neat. Thank you for saying you're going to paint something. What are you going to paint? Oh, I got a bunch of projects. What I'm going to paint is my... Uh, I really don't want to show it, though. No, don't worry. Save it for the show. <laughs> show part of it. No. Just a little bit. <laughs> That's a little teaser. No, no. If I show a little bit... You guys are gonna take a quarter. Well, here, I'll show you. Check this out. There's my pile of bodies. I oh, gotta hold paint. on. Let me take me myself out of uh, presenting. Uh, stop presenting. And I'll present you. There you go. You're live. All right. Well, here's a pile of bodies I gotta do. <laughs> so when you paint, uh, you use what? A uh, paintbrush or a little compressor? Great paint cans. I do have an airbrush, but I just haven't gotten into it and started messing with it. Okay. Cool. But I'd like to. After medics' videos, I kind of a little bit more courage towards getting into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hemi Storm is just does uh, awesome work uh, with uh, spray cans. It's yeah, just right. crazy. It does. Definitely, he's really good at masking. I got. Yeah, I was gonna say that. masking is insane. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have this truck which is this guy, which I received uh, last year. Everything is working, um, uh, but I haven't got that presenter still. This is the, it's upside down. Mercedes-Benz G350, Cabriolet. Oh, nice. I like to be different. And the paint job I'm going for, this is a first exclusive, only maybe five people ever saw this. But I've done the, my drawing, and this is what I'm going to do. Nice. So it's actually going to be based on what if the picture I saw, and I'll put myself live, is basically going to be this once it's done. So this is the paint job I want to recreate on that Mercedes-Benz. So that's just two colors. It's very basic. It's going to be very, very cool and very neat to see. But uh, on the hood, I'm going to have some black 
uh, some bars. And this is the, the back, what it looks like. Right now, I just put a piece of paper inside just to see how it was. But I did print these uh, backward. So once I do my masking inside, I can stick them on this side and use a light and just cut my and cut out and do it like a stencil. Yeah, I was going to ask if you maybe had a light box like Hemi Storms. I don't have a light box yet, but I do have a work light uh, at work, and it's a very thin bar. Gotcha. Uh, and it's about 12 inches. So that should work out pretty good. I'm going to find a piece of plastic or something. So Some opaque plastic. Yeah. And this is the new Tamiya body, uh, Tamiya truck. And it, the dry, it's a 4x4, but the dry shaft is actually uh, right on the side here. So it's kind of uh, interesting. But I wish I had better, not street tires on this, but uh, street tires. All right. Do a I wish I had better... Oh, somebody's doing echo. So that's the top of that truck. So it should be pretty interesting and, and different. That's what I like um, about doing RCs is being different uh, than anybody else. Is, is doing my own style, doing my own little... Uh, Yep. Nice. I'm working on a few things. I'll go up to my hobby station here. Have you guys done much with decals? Decals, yeah. Yep. Because I was looking, I was looking online, and there was a couple places that did um, water slide decals that were permanent. Like even um, good enough for the washing machine, um, or excuse me, excuse me, not wash machine, um, dishwasher. They're made for like mugs and stuff or guitars. And I was wondering if those would work for um, RC. So I was gonna play around with that. Nice. I, I haven't I haven't got that far. I'll tell. Water slide. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you guys if it works uh, out. There is some decals you can get done by other people, and uh, if you have your stuff, just bring it to them, and they'll. They'll print it, and they can use special ink that's actually uh, special ink that's actually UV protective and actually waterproof. So when okay. you stick it onto your truck, they're um, they're waterproof. XXX Main does a lot of uh, uh, stickers for trucks, and that's basically what I put on this guy. So all these stickers on this guy. This is my. Oh, I'm losing an eye. Oh no. <laughs> So this is my uh, this is my twin hammer, and I call it my puppy. So here's his here, and there's the driver. So th these are stickers. So they're pretty much it looks. And I got STP. So all this is just sticker. Right. What I did for this is I tried to make some metal panels, and then I said, why the heck am I trying to bend metal? I just use styrene. And it's just white styrene. I didn't even paint it. I just stuck it onto here. And, and then uh, I put the GCM uh, um, shock mounts. And then I realized that usually everybody flips it forward. But then I realized, I go, wait a minute. If I flip it the other way, I can do it like a hood. So now mine is actually flips forward just like a it hood. It's like a dog's mouth, too. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a dog's mouth. I've used and I install these lights. Like cars. Yeah, so it's different, but these are actually all stickers that are on there, and they're UV uh, UV protected stickers. Nice. But when you go online, when you go online and actually uh, order stickers, you have to tell them that you want them to be waterproofed mm -hmm. and also UV protected. Gotcha. Oh, oh, oh. Or else, when you, uh, you you'll just get them, and the first time you go in the in the in the dirt and the water with it, they're just going to wash off. And that's another one I have. It's my little razor buggy, but this is on a one sixteenth uh, uh, short course truck. Oh, nice! But that's a fun little thing. This is brushless, and this thing just goes like crazy. It's like a little mini eight. My newest thing I'm working on, and it's kind of big, 
but it's this guy. Oh yeah. Come on, focus. Yes, it is a camper, but <clears throat> it's got a motor, it's got a transmission, it's got everything. Oh, no kidding. I think you mentioned that. You said you could drive it by itself. Yeah, so I remember that. What I did with this guy, and I'll just present my, present to everybody again. So I've taken a GCM frame, which is the Cross Canyon. Um, and what I've done is I've taken his server mount and chopped it off and make it a little bit narrower. So right here, I, I, I'm about uh, a good inch shorter. And then at the front, I'm even a, a more of an inch shorter. So I'm really tapered. Uh, so the back is really big and then it goes smaller and up to, I uh, get to this steering circle. And it's, it's really cool. It's fun to see. And actually, please, I put a video up on the, on my Facebook and also on my Instagram. And uh, people are just finding it funny. Uh, I do have a video. I can show you where I got my inspiration from. I think you were saying you are going to like tow it behind a truck and then let it drive away by itself. That is correct. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do once I... That's awesome. So let me find this real quick. History. Okay. So share screen. You guys can actually do that also. Eh? On your right side of your screen, you should have tools and you can actually go share screen. And you can actually uh, share a video or something. So here's the video. Uh, it's a caravan with a Renault turbo engine. And you won't hear the audio, but you actually. And there it is in real life. It's somebody that made this. And when I saw this, I, I found it so funny. Uh, so I am going to try to make it look old like that. You guys are seeing a video right now? Yep. 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 Okay. And I'm going to try to find some bicycle and put it behind there. And uh, so that's pretty much where I got my inspiration from uh, for making this uh, RC. Nice. Maybe you can that's use great. a propane tank for miles, seeing that. weight or something. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Stop presenting. So. That's, uh, yeah, so for the propane tank, I've already done that. And I've actually, uh, I use my, my uh, soldering. It has a blowtorch uh, feature and I tried it for the first time and uh, I kind of went too much uh, and it actually really melted. So you can see the bump. You can see the bump there on the side. Yep. There it is. Yep. So I've done the uh, propane tank in front. I still got to do the top to stiffen it, but I still haven't figured out how I'm going to mount it onto here. So I'm working on a couple things, but I'll figure it out. I'll come up with something. Seems like a lot of people use just some angle aluminum and make some brackets or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing a lot with aluminum recently. It's fun to work with. Right. Nice and soft. Yeah. And I also have to come up with a bracket that goes here and that actually going to protect this so when I do wheelies uh, that I don't tear the whole back apart oh, yeah. when it hits the ground. Get some flint on the back end. Or a oh, big the battery's platform. there. Flint, nice. <laughs> Throw some sparks. Yeah. <laughs> so I've talked about a couple of my projects. Who wants to talk about what's on their bench? Ethan, what do you have? What are you working on? All right. Um, this is my dad's uh, ready-to-run uh, honcho here. Uh, my little brother was running it with me yesterday, and it had Pro-Line flat iron tires on it, and uh, the diffs were dragging in the snow, so I put my uh, Viterra Super Swampers on it from uh, the Viterra Sender, and... Um, 
We got a 35 turn Tekken motor combo in here. And uh, today I'm going to build some uh, wheel wells like I got on my Dingo for it so we can keep the crap out of it. Yeah, it's just the basics of it. Pretty stock. Cool. How do you plan to build the wheel wells? Styrene or? Yeah, I got this Tupperware. giant sheet of uh, styrene. Ah, nice. Cheaper if you buy it in bulk. Yeah, that's what I hear. I've yeah, used, hobby shop prices are just oof. I've used a Ziploc uh, canister. The uh, it's on it's like a square, but the little round edges. I've used uh, those yeah. for my SCX10, and they work perfectly. That's a good idea. Folgers, Folgers cans work pretty good too. The little small ones, they're red. You can cut them up. Okay. Yeah, I like those for the uh, wheel wall portion. Um, yep. I got some trays on my other one, so I can put things like this ESC on this tray here. So I'm going to build another tray for the other side. Okay. And then nice. maybe uh, paint it or plastic it if it's black. Not really sure yet. Cool. I use that spray rubber a lot on things. Yeah. The, I, uh, on TV this, stuff. This uh, Toyota back here, it's actually a plastic dip, which is that uh, the rubber spray. It's holding up really gotcha. well, actually. I think this is three years worth of scratches and dings and dents on it, and it's well, it's doing really well, good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, nice. This good last year, so I found out about liquid electrical tape. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I use that all the time. Show, yeah, I use that all the time. Here's my can. Yep, when you come on here, here, this year, it's actually yellow. And the year before that, it was <laughs> had a lightning. Oh, no, that was the one I saw, I think. <laughs> yeah, so before it used to have a little lightning on it, electrical tape. Gotcha, but gotcha. now it's actually, and it's from the same company, the logo changed a little bit. But what I like about the electrical tape is that it's, you paint it on. So to me, it's a little bit better than a spray can. Yep. Yeah, and it, you can remove it pretty easy too, if you have to. Yeah. Yes, and that's what I did for my camper. Is um, uh, is it for the camper? No, it's for my twin hammer. So I can remove the body. Uh, you just take two um, a male and a female uh, a Dean plug, and you can actually make an extender, and two wires are connected to it. So I put that on Instagram also. Uh, but I'm thinking I'm going to be doing a do-it-yourself uh, breakout connector or something like that. So video and put on YouTube. Okay. Nice. Hagen, what are you working on? What kind of project oh. do you guys want to go? Um, well, I'm trying to finish up my SCX-10 right now. I got a whole bunch of aluminum parts on it, and I've got some bumpers on order. I'll pull it out and show it to you. Is it an SCX-10 2 or the original SCX-10? I have the original SCX-10. That's the one I put the most time into right now, but I started the SCX-10 too also, but I haven't really done that much with it. Uh, yeah, I can show you the SCX-10 one and two and um, just get some light on here. Right now I got the Wrangler on order, but it's back ordered. The SCX-10 two. Wrangler looks like an interesting kit or yeah. RTR. Uh, here you go. Not really sure how to present, so I'll just talk it the whole time, I guess. Not a problem. You guys can see this thing. That thing looked too clean. Yeah, uh, I don't really drive them. I, I drive my little 18th scale cars. Okay. All these ones kind of just sit <laughs> and look pretty. I drive these ones. I don't cool. know if you could see all of that, but yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward. I, once I got into the scale stuff, I kind of got away from the tracks. Good. <laughs> right? Bashing is a little expensive. Oh, yeah. I think Tony can attest to that. Hey Tony, is is uh, bashing expensive? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks yes, awesome. Yes, it is indeed. Things are broken all the time around here. I got a bunch of them that I need to attend to right now. And a new one. That that I that new one. You need an intern, Tony. I know. Actually, there's a guy locally that I met that said he'd be willing to uh, to work on my cars for me. Nice. <laughs> I need to get his Your number. Yeah. I need uh, – yeah, I, I'm constantly, constantly down. I've got – that one's down. That one's down. The Losi is down. Oh, it's time consuming. Yes, six ten. This one needs rear diff. This one needs a whole chassis replacement. Really? And then the installation of the chassis brace. Oh, right. Finally, they finally made yeah. for it. Gotcha. Well, it's it, it's so. like what, what do you do? Do you like you got a choice to do? Is you stop making videos, and you fix the cars. Or you get somebody else to fix the cars for you and, and keep making videos and keep uh, pumping them out. Uh, it, it's hard to satisfy everybody. True. Especially when you have a yep. YouTube channel. Like DJ Medic, a while back, he had so many videos and so many uh, RCs that some of his buddy came over, come over and, and help them out uh, to fix the cars. Yeah, and then yeah, some people videos. heard about that, and then were saying, "Well, DJ Medic is not a true RC guy. He doesn't even fix his own car. He doesn't even know how to solder, which is not true. He does, but uh, like s some people were just bashing, just being mean, and saying that uh, just just because he doesn't fix his car his cars himself, which he doesn't have time or he's producing them, right? videos, he's editing, right, like right. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are jealous, but I like it's. Oh, well, that's going on. So, you know, if somebody's good at something, I, I all four let them, let them do what they're good at. Yep. Why well, waste your time? Hey, Tony, send me all the parts, and I'll put it all together for you. <laughs> 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 they just um, – I just ordered a bunch of trucks, uh, parts for that mud truck. So I can't wait for that to come in. My son and I are going to work on it cool. based off the SCX-10. Basically, I think the only thing is the, uh, the skid plate on the bottom. Yeah. So it's supposed to line up everything with my Jeep back here, but I, I can't bear to take it apart. I had it ready to take it apart because um, it's already got the metal upgrades and all that. So I just decided to get a metal hot racing gearbox for this. Metal skid plate. I ordered some metal axles. I have no idea if they're going to be any good or not. They were like 115 bucks for two SCX-10 axles, front and rear. Yep. Uh, fully complete with the uh, even the uh, the like the pan, not the pan hard, but the, just the front links, uh, even the steering links, metal. So, and then I ordered a bunch of. Uh, I think I got hot racing links for the 313 mil, which is what this Jeep is supposed to be. That this is supposed to go to. Yeah, that's what I. But um, yeah, I mean, so I was looking at buying somebody's used one, and then I realized I was going to want to upgrade everything anyway because it's going to be a hopefully a beast of a truck. So I've got hot racing rims coming that I ordered, and I couldn't get any. Um, I really want the mud basher tires for it, the two point twos. Yeah. But nobody has them, so right now I've got the AliExpress mud basher tires coming that were. All four for like twenty five bucks or something. Hey. Just something to put on it for now. Yeah. Because uh, I really want that style of that tractor tire. Um, and RC Four Wheel Drive does have another those. tire that's kind of a tractor tire, but not not enough of one for me. So branded something. I don't gunslingers, I think, or something like that. But okay. I want the deep treads. So but you're right about. You know, the videos, you got to take time to, I mean, I either work on them at night or I edit a video at night. It's kind of what it comes down to. You got to live the RC life. Huh? Oh. I like to do everything, but at some point you just can't. True. Well, that, that's why I, I made a lot of videos two years ago. Like I was pumping out two or three videos a week and I was making a lot of videos every weekend I was editing and or during the night I was editing and just videotaping during the week right after work and all that. Uh, but then 
I, I, I just got, it was just too much uh, with work with my little guy, Sebastien, he's eight now. Uh, so I said, no, I'm going to spend more time with him. So it was a choice I made to spend more time with him. And then because it came to the point that he was playing games uh, behind me. And uh, he actually yeah, came to me. I remember seeing that. Yeah, he was seven years old, I think, or something. And he was saying, well, dad, you never play with me. You just play with your cars. And that kind of, that kind of hurt me. Um, so that's why when I stopped making a, a lot of videos, I still make videos. But I decided to, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to, this time like right now, I can't, I can't get back. I can't get back. So I, I have to spend the time with him now while I can, right. uh, while he's still young. Because when he comes to his team, he won't want to see daddy anymore. He's going to want to see his friend. Right. Yeah, that's so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Wig Spitter RC. It says RC party. Yeah. He's chatting on the chit chat. <laughs> on the... Nice. Tony, remember I was talking yeah, about Wig Spitter, that? Wig if you want to come in, there's still room. It's pretty strong. There's the link. And I think Tony has been presenting long enough. I think I'm going to stop the pre stop. Yeah, thank presenting. you. I didn't know I was still presenting. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody see my hack job here. <laughs> yeah, we saw you soldering and like going like this with the solder and Tony, this is what I was talking about with the body lining. This way I'll put you on so you can see it. Oh the armor inside there it. There you go. Yeah, it's just Teflon tape or just aluminum tape that I use. See it's this stuff. Can you can you see it? It's kind of thick mastic tape, but it's the silver stuff like you're talking. Just a little yeah, bit thicker. It's muffler tape. You can get that at the auto store, and it's called muffler uh, tape. It, it's similar. It's similar, Frank. But it has, this has like a clay material on it. Also, it's for heating ducts. Ah, okay, okay, yes, I know that one. It's like a mastic. It's called. Yep. So it's it's like a sixteenth of an inch, or it's really really thin, maybe two millimeters or something. But you can really form it to the body, and it gives it a little bit more strength than just a tin tape, I find. That's cool. Yeah, I need to get some for my bodies because my bodies are destroyed. Yeah, this is pretty decent. Body. Tony, a trick for that, a trick for that, Tony, is learn how to land on the wheels, not on the body. <laughs> nice. Easier said Don't than done. You doing that? <laughs> he's. I think he's getting better and better every time. It's hard to talk and do videos and not crash, I must say, too, from what I can tell. From well, what, what I do is the problem is I've got the selfie stick in my hand, so it limits the, the motion that I have with my trigger finger. Right. I can't really get – if I really need to control it in the air, it's really tough when you're holding that as well and trying to keep everything steady and not jerk the camera. And, have you so. seen Medic's um, thumb control that he has on his – I, do, I need to make one of those. Right. I was thinking the same thing. Maybe a 3D printer would them be. And sell them. Yeah, definitely. I'd be all for buying one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody Maybe should actually use their antennas. I always just hide mine down inside the box. Oh, yeah, I hide it also. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't I care about rain. Problems. Well, I do. I do bring it out of the box, but I just like uh, uh, use a tie wrap and I put it on the body post or something. Um, it's better when it's pointing up. Get more range. I'll show you my. I've never had, a, never had a problem with range. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually go far, so I just usually tuck them right in. I've never box. had any problems just uh, leaving it all inside the radio box. I've never really put an antenna on my trail finder at all, but I don't really drive that far away. I think I drive better when I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, true. Same. I did drive mine. Like, uh, I wanted to see how far I could go. I went clear near out of sight, um, maybe like two or three football fields, and I could still um, – I didn't feel like I was losing it at all. No? So. Nice. Yeah. Cool. I've never once thought, oh, man, I, I wish I could go further than it let me go. Um, I name my you know good ones the toy ones yeah when it goes like you know 
20 feet away. And... Andromeda had a new FPV vehicle out. I'm interested in looking at. It's like 250 with all the gear and everything. Who's oh, that? nice. Andromeda. It's on Tower. Oh, that's it's nice. back order to course, but. I tried to. Um... Um, real quick, um, Dante, what are you working yep. on? We haven't gone through you yet for your stuff. Let's see. I got a couple things. Um, recently, I've been working on, uh, well, maybe a year or so ago, I cut, let me see if I can, I hope you guys can see this okay. I cut a half inch off each side of my axles oh, yeah. to get the tires to be underneath the truck a little bit better. That was a fun right. project. It went, went, you can't even hardly see a seam. You can see a little bit on that one. Um, but when I did that, there wasn't room for shocks. So at first I had them underneath here with my leaf springs, but um, I lost a lot of steering. So recently I got a link suspension front and back, and um, I got my shocks right in here on the sides. So I made this plate here out of aluminum, and it's it's hard to see, but it went, it went really good. It took me, I don't know, like 40 hours to do. I really took my time and it turned out tried great. to do it well. Cool. Making That's sure that neat. everything lined up, there was room for everything. That's thinking of Yeah, thank you. It was a fun, a fun project. And then, um, yeah, and then I made a skid plate down here. Now, with my link suspension, I, but when I uh, before my link suspension, it it was night and day difference. It's so nice to have it raised up. I got the the transfer cases attached from the top, and I know that some people um, buy aftermarket ones that are like that, anyways. But then uh, then I made a skid plate on the bottom so that nothing could get caught. So nice. that's cool. And then I got my my D rings. Yeah, yeah. And I got to redo this skid plate back here. I just threw it together. But I got my D rings hanging from the bottom of the bumper. And why I did that is because I didn't want the D-rings to get caught on rocks. If they're on the back of the bumper, they can get pushed back and when you're caught on rocks. But this is, um, yeah. they go almost completely flush. Nice. Cool. You ever considered doing which the is, uh, motor drop? Which is good. Um, a little bit. For me, it, it hasn't. Um, it just drops your I don't know why. Gravity. Sure, sure. I, think I mean, I, I don't know. I guess that would be uh, did it on his TF2. I've seen it. I just I can't bring myself to uh, to cut all of those parts up. I looked up uh, what a frame would cost to those cross members, and it's like fifty bucks. I think you might be better off getting weighted axles or beef tubes or something weighted tires or you, there's other options. Could... The other thing I was wondering is uh, if I was going to have problems because uh, I used to run full links on my truck like you do. But um, I thought my if I dropped the motor like that, um, the motor was gonna contact like the pan hard bar, the steering linkages. Just kind of a risk once you cut all that stuff up. Right under compression. Yeah, I've cut them. a ton up on mine, but. <laughs> I tried to have mine running as low as possible. For a while, I had mine running into the. Uh, transmission it wore a pretty good groove so that was that was kind of sketchy because i don't want to wear through my transmission obviously i had one of those uh dinky rc uh like a 3d printed high clearance skid plate but it raised the transfer case so much that my uh, rc four-wheel drive punisher shafts were actually uh riding on the transmission so i've got a gouge in my transmission casing from those drive shafts yep. rubbing on it yep. now Okay. Yep, that's what I got too. Hmm. So high clearance is good, but I'm not going to lose my transmission for it. Right. I got a comment here from uh, on the on the online video, Net Cruiser RC Tech Car, which is a uh, local guy here in the Ottawa area. Uh, he says I I also like talking about the tape. Uh, he says he also really likes the Gorilla Tape Clear. Uh, for reinforcing the inside of Alexan. So I guess Gorilla Tape makes a clear one. I think I might have some of that sitting here too. It's uh, packing tape if, if that's what he's talking about. I got some I haven't tried yet. Sure one, but he says it's lighter than normal Gorilla or Goop or even drywall mesh. 
and it's strong. So I think this might be what he's talking about: clear repair tape, Gorilla. Cool. So is that like a thick? Is that like a thicker rubber? I think or it's going to be a lot like any pack. It's two inches wide and pretty thin, but it's it's really clear compared to regular packing tape. Okay. It is. is it stronger than packing tape? Uh, let me pull think? it out and take a look. Yeah, I wonder how it, it tears. It's a more rubbery. It's more okay. really clear, too. Like, almost like black sand clear. Oh, yeah. So it probably holds up to abuse a little better because packing tape can just rip and it dries out really fast and yeah. shatters. Right. Well, here, let me cut some off. Uh, RC Sparks, I know he was on here uh, before I got here, but uh, on one of his beast builds with like the the Truggy Age, it was a long time ago, but uh, he built all of his inner fenders just out of Gorilla Tape, but it was black. Right. Okay. Yeah, that was on the Beast, I believe. Or is it? Yeah, that was a that was a cool truck. I like mm -hmm. that one. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, it still tears, but it's more rubber, much more rubbery than um. This would work good, yeah, I bet. Cool. Uh, we have a uh, Deuce One Hundred. Uh, he says, "Happy New Year, T. Uh, I'm in the house, and he's watching." Nice. Awesome. So. Uh, we do have some people watching. Any truck salute. Yeah. I like that one. Okay, what else? Um, wondering if I should do my big unboxing, my big box. Hey, I'm not going to say another you. box. Sounds good to me. And that one I actually bought. Um, it arrived probably two weeks before Christmas. And one of the local guys here says, um, and uh, two or three weeks before Christmas. And uh, he said, do you open your box yet? I go, no, I'm, it's a Christmas present. I'm waiting till Christmas to open it. He goes, are you not? You're actually going to wait till Christmas? I go, I know what's in the box. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> and, and he keeps bugging me every day. So do you open it yet? Do you open it yet? Because it's after Christmas now. We're what, the, the fourth. And I still did not open the box. <laughs> so, nice. But today is the day and I'm setting up the camera. And I gotta change that. Hey, Frank. I, gotta, I was on I here do. earlier, and I caught a glimpse of. You got a got a glimpse of what? Uh, that V put yep. that on. Your audio was really cutting out. Testing, testing. Okay, I got to point the camera down because I got to watch the table. That's not bad. That's my little camping setup. I think you have Dante presenting still, Frank. Oh. Or maybe not. Maybe just on my screen. Nope. Yeah, if you have it highlighted, he won't gotcha. switch. Gotcha. So I'm presenting now. Yep, gotcha. Sorry about that. Way too many things around. Okay. This is my big box. Oh, wow. And it's from Asia Tees, all the way from China. Wow. Big box still has the straps on it. Didn't even open that. What do you guys think it is? RC related. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> um, another beast. Nope. I don't have any of the uh, one thing. Where are you guys? There you are. Yep. One thing I don't have is two of the same truck. Oh, so I remember I that now. I have That's this true. pipe. Very true. 
Hmm. I'm making noise here so I can't really hear you guys, so bear with me for a sec. I'll try to open it on this side so I don't you can see it. I don't look around Asia Tees enough to uh, know what might be in there. There's they have tons of good stuff. I, from what I've seen on video, there's lots of decent price stuff. Yeah. They are. The lines is boom racing. Okay. It's a. There we go. Oh wow! Oh, semi. Oh, that's awesome. That'd be fun to build. Let's see, it's a cab over. And it's a three-speed transmission. I was gonna ask. That's cool. Yeah. So, let's see if I can't show that. Yep. That looks awesome. So it's got this three complicated. And uh, so this guy's pretty big. Don't know if you'll see better on this picture. Got to use the right camera. I guess it doesn't show very good. Yeah. This is what I wanted to see more than anything is the size of the cab. Mind the camera, it's just being bad. <laughs> now, this is, should be nice and big. Yeah. So I'll use a website and I'll go to the website and show you guys exactly what it looks like. But I got the frame rails, there's wheels, it's typical. Typical stuff in the box. Can I see the wheels and the axles? Are, are those easy to uh, get or are they all wrapped up? Because I was thinking of putting um, those kind of wheels and axles on my uh, gooseneck or find something like that. Okay. Because I, um, I got a gooseneck trailer that I made. That is, um, the bed is 25 inches by eight and a half. And I'm looking for some wheels that will be tucked underneath it that, uh, look, look scale, but aren't too big. Cause I still want hey, some room for a for little suspension. Dooleys? Those are a pretty good size on your toy hauler. Even comes with a mortar. Nice. Uh -huh. I got the wheels. I haven't found the axles yet. They may be in a parts bag or something. Okay. The axles are plastic. They're not metal. Okay. Hopefully metal gears. Yeah, it's all metal gears. Good. Can you, uh, do you have a tape measure handy? What are they like hub to hub? But they do have the kit. Uh, they do have the kit, so um, I'll stop presenting. They do have the kit that um, has the metal axles for for this truck. Okay. Okay. Just go to the website. Now, does that have the new? Isn't there a new trailer hitch on the back of that style, different than like the one you have on your toy hauler? I believe the, uh, like the attachment trailer is different on the newer ones. Yeah, the trailer is going to be different. I'm just going to find the picture of this guy. 
So what did the something like that uh, roughly run you price wise? Surprisingly, a head lot cheaper than Tamiya. Yeah. And it was a um, first uh, first time I wanted to try a uh, an RC truck like that. So let me go share. I've always wanted to build an, uh, like an SCX 10 6x6. That'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, that's sharp. So th this is the truck. And that's, that's good. How I'm going to paint it yet. But they've done some pretty good jobs on the paint. Right. Uh, this truck was about 250 bucks. That's not oh, wow. too bad. Oh, yeah. The only thing it needs in it is an ESC um, a receiver transmitter. But I wanted That's a good to. Price. Oh, yeah. But it, it did cost me 120 bucks of shipping. Oh, oh man. Right. And probably took quite a while. It didn't take that much. It took about a week and a half. Oh, that's not bad. But you do have aluminum axles here, but the axles are more expensive than the truck is. Really? Right. They're 346 that's... for aluminum axles. That's amazing. I've but always get... wanted... You get I've four always wanted uh, some of those, like, the Predator tracks. Uh, yeah. The RC four-wheel drive makes. Those are cool, but... Once you uh, add up all the prices and everything, you end up, uh, you could buy a second truck or whatever. Yeah. I have some Intigy axles. They're cheap and they go together like a cheap set of axles, but they're metal. This is the trailer I want to buy. Okay. Oh, nice. Steak body. And you can remove the post. And uh, the reason it's not that long and the price, I like the price. Be good for logging your woods too. Yeah, in the my back trail, yeah. Yep. So because there's a lot of different gotta, trailers gotta... and bodies you can get for these, like they they, they range from a lot of prices, even dump trucks. Uh, so it's, it's it's really cool and neat what they have for those RCs. Yeah, there's some really cool videos on all the tractor trailers and what have you. You got yeah. The build uh, I'm working on with some winches. Yeah. The build I'm working on right now, I'm going to try to use the TRX4 axles. I thought those would be good on a Unimog, being uh, portal axles. Be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. I've always wanted to uh, custom build my TRX4 into something, but I would have to do something that had portals on it. Right. Something that would cover up all the massive amount of electronics and high battery. And <laughs> I know exactly where I, mean, I know from. a lot of people. I know a lot of people hate the uh, all the complications involved with the uh, diff locks, but I absolutely love it. You know, you can change, oh, yeah. you can make anything an obstacle. You know, it get, it gets kind of boring crawling over things where the truck just rolls right over it. There's no like challenge to it. Seems rather durable too. If you watch any of Calvin Talbot's videos, he beats the crap out of his. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've uh, I've taken mine apart and rebuilt them. And I can't see how you would really have any load on the servo. The mechanism, how it goes together, is super simple, and I think they did a great job on it. Yeah, for the yeah, money. I got it mainly for <laughs> my. I just set out a gooseneck trailer, and I want to be able to uh, turn sharp and um, yeah. you know get some maneuver yeah. a little better. Yeah, the turning radius Sometimes difference with the differentials unlocked is it'll blow your mind. Yeah, yeah. Because with my um, Trail Finder 2, it's a little hard to drive it in the house. Just because it's hard to yeah, you get that can't really turn around in the hallway or something. Yeah. Yeah, especially on carpet. Front mm -hmm. wheels get pushed around. See, what I was really hoping for is since this TRX4 came out with these, uh, the differentials and the axles, I was really hoping the rest of the market would kind of jump on it, you know, make some trucks with the lockers like that. Medic had a video yeah, there's... portal axles for RC four wheel drive. Hey Tony, you're really gonna put you're really gonna put those tires on there, Tony, on that truck? I have to for now. So many of these badlands. I didn't know what I needed. Um, oh, is that for the year? I need tires for a Revo. 
I looked up Proline said these are for the Revo, but these are 17 millimeter hexes, and I've only got 14. You have 14 here. millimeter hex on your Revo? Yep. So until I can get an adapter or swap them out. I think mine are still 14 on mine. Okay. They're stock, whatever comes stock. Yeah. Uh, this is probably an old one. You know, I think it's probably, I don't know if it's even a conversion or not, but. All right. Yeah, I definitely Just, want to have these tires on here. I mean, these things are huge. The uh, hex off of the um, uh, Summit should fit on the Revo. Yeah, those are like the twin trucks, except for the two speed. and. Yeah. Because uh, it is a uh, 17 millimeter for uh, the Summit. Now, are there's just a simple slide on like this, or there's more of the threaded? Uh, no, they're the threaded one. Okay. So you think yeah. I'll have to do an, an adjustment for that, or I haven't looked at it closely. I'm just now, I mean. Adapters. I'm not sure. Let me go check. I'm kind of bummed about the. Uh, Those tires look mean, that's for sure. The Badlands. Yeah. So I kept asking, cool. like, these smaller ones look like they're the right size. He's like, no, this is it. So I looked up on. Um, the website, but I'm looking at it actually says Revo MT, so I guess that might be like the monster truck version of the Revo. I don't know much about Revos other than I see them flipping and doing awesome stuff. Well, there's the Revo 3.3, the Nitro. Yeah. I know like I Jump RC used to just go nuts with his Revo. Mm hmm. So. Back to Salsa. Yeah, they do too. Oh, well, yeah, when they can just, like somebody said, they can just put a new one into every video. It doesn't hurt. Right. Have you watched their behind the scenes? I find those more fascinating. Right. Those guys are nuts. Yep. Yeah, this is going to have to do for now. Nice. Who cool is the yeah, Badlands? But... Boy, you keep so that truck clean. To. He hasn't run it yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The clean ones. Clean isn't usually a word that's just used to describe my trucks. So I've been using the shower shower brush with all long bristles. Gets in yeah. all the, the nooks um, and crannies. Yeah, nooks and crannies real well. Yeah, it works. Yeah, so it is the uh, it is a metal, and it's yeah, it's like Max. Yeah, so it is a big one. It's my big summit. Big truck. This is basically the same thing as yours, uh, except it's got a slower motor and it's got the two speed transmission. Yeah. I don't, I don't know anything about this motor. It's a Hacker Scalar 8. I know that the ESC and stuff, it all looks really pretty. So, like this purple. Let's see. My uh, I just nice. zip tied the ESC on <laughs> because sure. I was here then <clears throat> trying to get a plate because it's so big that it won't actually fit for me to servo tape it or put any type of double sided tape under it, it'll just pop off. So I'm just gonna zip tie it down. Seems pretty good, moves a little, but it's not coming off, it's ribbed on the side so. Yeah, the dash on, the, on this truck, the dash is just stupid detailed. It's really cool. Is it uh, nice. any translucent parts that you can light up? or? No, I'd have to uh, thin it out to put a light. Because okay. right. uh, I'm, well, I'm holding it to the light, light right now. I do see a little bit through it, but... Mm -hmm. They don't make it easy for you. No, right? I picked up some T-bone bumpers for mine, too. They seem pretty good. T-bone skid, skid plate. For which one? For the Revo? Yeah, the E-Revo. A-arm skids for my uh, slash also. 
Okay. They're made of, all made out of Dalaran. Pretty durable. I blew the mortar in my uh, uh, 4x4 slash, so I'm debating on either buying a new mortar or just changing the whole power system to something else. So I got you. Uh, what I don't like is the cost attached to it, uh, because what's more expensive on an RC is the power system. Yeah, the Avalonium system is pretty pricey. And I find it's not that good, unless the four pole, uh, the newer system, are better. Uh, but right. the one I had lasted me maybe two and a half years. I did run a lot of packs on it, but still, it's, I would have thought it would last for longer. Right. Traxxas does have a um, buyback. So if you send mm -hmm. them the old part, you get yours back at the, at a cheaper uh, a che cheaper part. But my problem is by the time I do this and I do the exchange rate and the brokerage and all that, it's, sometimes it's not worth it. Gotcha. It's like a wash. Yeah, I might as well just go to the local hobby store and support those guys instead. Mm-hmm. That's I like what I'm the doing local hobby shops peoples. in my area. The problem for me is it's just, it's a lot of speed parts and I'm really more into the crawlers. So, you know, you go to the hobby shop and I kind of look around the little section. Traxxas. Half the time. Yeah. Half the time I feel like I go there and they have tires, but they only have two. It's not a set of four. There's just two tires there. So you have to buy the tires yeah. from them and then order the second set from them if you want. I did that, them. and the second set was discontinued. They had the oh. tires on the wall. They had six six tires, so I bought all six. I wanted two sets and ordered the last set, and they're discontinued. So I guess I got two spares now for the first set. A net cruiser on the on the web on the video. We type, typing and saying that. Uh, Talbot's videos gave me a huge respect for the TRX4. I cannot mm -hmm. believe it holds up to all that power that it has. Yeah, six S. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I've I've known a lot of people that actually blew the uh, TRX4, the the one that comes with it. They, they blew the uh, ESC. Okay. That's so five, I think. More. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've heard that too. Honestly, I'm really impressed by my TRX4. I feel like it's got a ton of plastic on it, but the plastic, the way they braced it, it's strong. It's not like my SCX10 here where you got the plastic fenders and they're just flimsy as all get out. Uh, the TRX4, it's it's strong, and I really like it. So yep. it kind of makes metal upgrades, you know. I'm not kind of hoping that they overbuilt it, not knowing what they were doing. And so we wouldn't have to buy replacement <laughs> parts. <laughs> I well, mean, I'm not. I, I, I'm not a fan of uh, aluminum upgrades um, for the simple fact that aluminum bends and doesn't come back. Compared to uh, plastic, it was then, and it actually comes back to its original shape. Right. Good for uh, show and shine trucks. Yes, for oh, show please. and shine truck and shelf queen, aluminum yeah. parts are awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, I just ordered a whole bunch of uh, parts from sale. We'll see how I do. <laughs> You've ordered some aluminum parts for Big what? Pictures. Well, it's not aluminum. It's just metal. I think it's steel, like the axles and everything. Oh, for the mud so truck. We'll okay, for the mud truck. Yeah. But I typically am for plastic. Everyone asks, hey, well, should I upgrade this? Sometimes I might do like the carriers or things like that. But Yeah, it's good to have a package I don't, in a break. Yeah, I don't usually do it. Like this one's all metal. And I've been lucky. This one's actually been a tank, but um, most of the time, I don't want as much metal as this one has on it. It seems like the hinge pin holders that are aluminum like to bend on you. Yeah. But which one is it that you're working on right now? Zombie. Zombie cheetah or no zombie? CHK zombie. It's not even broken. It's just that the um, the dog bone came out of the cup. I let my son drive it, and you can, you know, like plastic, it will flex, but it doesn't flex as easy when you're trying to put it back in by hand. 
No. It's a pretty well built car. Yeah, it seems to be. Looks like people have I'm fun with them. Liking that they've got a one of the distributors is coming back to the U.S. They used to have a couple. They used to like actually do reviews on these in RC Car, the magazine. Okay. What name brand is that again? DHK. 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 Okay. Yeah. I think uh, got a couple. I think I've seen an RC. They're all metal like this one too. RC tanks and trucks. And... Everything in its <laughs> metal, metal, metal. But um, it's a hundred amp ESC, hundred twenty amp. Uh, hobby wing ESC, brushless. Not super fast, which, which is what I like about it. I'm not a big speed guy. It's super controlled in the air. It almost always writes itself with somebody like me driving it. But, uh, easy fix. One more that's been sitting there waiting for a repair. Cool. Does the Losi AVC write itself like the Traxxas Stability Control does, supposedly? Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it I know that some people just really give that X Max, you know, they hate it with a passion. I think it's an amazing truck. Um, it's my Hi, favorite Bert. to run. Uh, you know, I had a mishap where I just kind of chucked it over a fence the other day to get it out, and it it landed on the rear wheels, but not weird, and it snapped off one of the uh, shock shafts. But I mean, for the abuse that I've given it, it's it's held up really well. Uh, the way that it just handles, it just it steers good. It, um, the ABC in it is awesome. Uh, I, I know some people don't like it. Some people don't like that. Shot. Yeah. Well, the the Losi has huge shocks on it, so mm -hmm. it um, I mean they're like almost double the, the of it or the diameter. They're huge, but. The, uh, the steering on the Losi is not awesome stock. I mean, for what you get stock with the Traxxas is insane. And I've got some new um, coming for mine, for my shocks. I'm going to try their progressive shocks. I'm going to give it a go and see how it does. But um, it's, it's definitely the one where I felt like there was actually the value in that truck for what you're paying for it. Right. So. It's expensive. I'll say that. It's stupid expensive. Well, the battery is too. The fun. Fun is I feel insane. like, uh, like uh, a lot of the companies are getting that kind of stupid expensive prices. Like, I was looking at Vanquish rims, but uh, I, that that's not even feasible for me. You know, I, doing this as a hobby. Proline Pro Forger, like ninety dollars for two of them. I mean, yeah. it, just, it gets to the point home. where you know. You know it doesn't cost them that much to make it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's tricky. People will pay it. Um, less people need to pay it if there's more markup on it. It becomes like the the name brand, the one to have that in their marketing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I was looking at the axles, so I was, I'm trying to build up this son of a digger as well. Trying to build up all these things, and I don't actually have a job right now, so it's going slow on that the buildup of these trucks. <laughs> but uh, the axle, I was looking at the Vanquish. I'm like, oh, that ain't too bad. And then I'm like, oh, well, that's just like the shell. Yep. <laughs> and then you've got to buy the. Uh, I don't know what the names of everything are. So if I was doing this one, you got to get these outer parts, and then yeah, lockups, yeah. Lock -ups, yeah. And all of that stuff, and I was like, man, for one of them, I'm going to be looking at almost 200 bucks for just like the rear one. One thing that really caught my eye, uh, looking for Christmas stuff, uh, I found some SSD axles that are just replacement housings for these original SCX tents, mm -hmm. and they let you use the original lockouts. And that's a good idea. That's really nice because same drive shafts too. Probably stuffs like that. It's like you don't have to buy all the stuff. You can yeah. just replace the axle housing and use what's there. Right. 
I think that's smart what they did too. I was looking at those, and that's what I would have gotten had I had an SCX10 I was going to scab from. Um, but I needed everything. Haunt me if I need to get any replacement parts because I'll probably be buying a new axle. <laughs> I, I haven't put them on yet, but uh, they look really scale compared to the factory ones. So I'm excited to put them on my dingo. Nice. Yeah, those SSD uh, axles are nice. My energies are just like copies of the SCX10 ones, but I can use all the components. Cool. Which ones are yours? Energy? Yeah, just $28 yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah, that starts to be the good part about just copies is everything works. You don't have to buy like Vanquish. You don't have to buy all their knuckles and C-hubs and all that jazz to actually make it work. You can just buy that part and, you know, upgrade and over time if you want to, or. You got to be careful though, that like my energy, I tried to put on RC four wheel drive C hubs and they wouldn't fit on the energy axles. Uh, axial aluminum lockouts wouldn't fit on the axles, but the plastic parts would fit. So I left the plastic parts on. That's interesting that the plastic ones would fit, but the metal must be just too big, huh? Yep. I think maybe it's just to finish on the paint or something. Well, I also put beef tubes in them, so they were, they were pretty packed full. I had to squeeze them shut. Inside of the uh, the the uh, are they steel or are they aluminum? Yeah, they're uh, it's like a cast steel, some sort of magnesium or something. Yeah, and the beef like, tubes inside of that. Yeah, the brass beef tubes inside of that. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty heavy. And they got uh, brass wheel weights on the pro line wheels. So you got a nice low center of gravity. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> wow. Uh, I went a, a best option I've ever bought for my uh, SCX10. I, I got that off of uh, GCM's web store and I'll show you real quick which one it is. Uh, so on their GCM web store on the SSD, SSD page, uh, you find this SCX Pro steering kit. Mm. This thing okay. was worth the money. That gives you the crazy turn radius on the, the original? SCX? Yes. Yeah. Yes, without changing the axles. You keep your same axle. You just change the, the, the C-hub and the carriers. And the oh, okay. crazy, crazy steering angle. RC crawler workbench. Nate had those, and those are amazing. Yeah, I got them on my SEX10, and like crazy. It gives you the eight degree uh, kingpin inclination, also. Uh, so it's just crazy. They are ninety one dollars nice. Canadian. Uh, I believe I paid eighty nine or eighty five, uh, but that I guess pricing is U.S. dollars taking a hit. So for us to buy U.S., it's friggin' it's crazy. Yeah, so you probably crazy. definitely need the uh, XVDs or CVDs for that steering angle, right? Yes, I've used the uh, I I already had CVD upgrade on mine, so uh, so I, I, the RC, I did it, just yeah. took the CVDs out and put in put put the other one, and I was rocking, it, and it makes yeah. night and day. Gotcha, crazy. Yeah, I got to get some CVDs for my Trailfinder, my SCX10. I'm just still running the originals in both of them. They don't really give me any troubles. It's just uh, I'd like that extra steering angle without the jitteriness. Yeah. Now, one thing you got to be careful with the um, uh, Trailfinder 2, especially the stock one, uh, is if you really turn it wide and then really torque it, you will snap it off. Uh, yeah, uh, like I snapped it twice. So completely shattered. Okay. Axles I never shattered, but I did sh uh, shatter the inside the uh, uh, the cup. The cup. I got to redo my spacers, the brass spacers or whatever, because mine after five years are all worn out. Makes the wheel Those, all floppy uh, up and down. In your steering, where right. you put the uh, the knuckle on. Those? Yeah. Do the bearing upgrade. Do the bearing uh, bearing upgrade for that. Okay. And I believe there's a couple of videos that, that does that, but uh, Chris actually did it on um, on the uh, beast that I got from him. Let's see if I can show. You. 
Yeah, change the bushings to bearings. I was kind of afraid to do that, uh, the bearing upgrade. So I just bought the uh, the rebuild kit for mine a while ago, and it's doing okay. But I think any bearing upgrade is a good idea. What bearings do you use? What do you guys uh, use? Pacer, Pacer ceramic bearings. Pacer? Yeah, right from the Tower Hobbies. Okay. I've used the, I mainly use the Fast Eddie, so I, I was just curious what other people are using. Right. Those look good too. Oh, I lost my bearing again. Uh, yeah, you uh, replace the bushing for a bearing, but I think you do have to drill it out a little bit. And then there's a very small bearing that you put in the hole and then with the screw. But I just noticed uh, I got one bearing that's missing. You won't be able to see it, but uh, it's inside. Basically, top and bottom, you replace the bushing with the bearing. I believe there's a couple of videos on YouTube about that, how to do that upgrade. What would you um? What would you search? What's that? What would you search? What would you put into uh, YouTube? Trail Finder Two bearing mod or something like that. Trail yeah, Finder trail... Two steering bearing okay. mod. Yeah, steering bearing mod. I think it is. Okay. For the Yoda or the Yoda Two axle. Okay, I see a couple here. Hopefully that works out. I really want to do that. Makes a big difference. Hopefully I did we'll not tighten things up because mine is so sloppy right now. Oh yeah. I also got to put in um some wedges or whatever, whatever. Some um not wedges. Shims. What do you call that? Shims. Shims. Washers. Yeah, shims. Shims. I got I got shim my um. Or just the the hub or the outer the outer part of yeah, take away the play in it. Yep. Yeah, in the oh, diff, you can actually shim the diff also. If you take your uh, what goes in the shaft and you you see if there's loose in it, then you have to shim to shim it to stop it from uh, being loose. That uh, RC four wheel drive rebuild kit that I got for my axle came with the the shims for it. Uh, yep, they're actually pretty nice shims. Traxxas sells them too. They're part number nineteen eighty five. They fit on five millimeter drive shafts, like for your tires or for your drive line. I just ordered them yesterday, so I know. Cool. Me, I used a different one. Either team associated. I think I have a assorted pack of those ones too. I haven't tried them yet. Yeah, these are the one I use. The team associated uh, number twenty one one forty one. Okay. So this is the one I use for the uh, e revo also the small little e revo. Gotcha. Now, do you still have the small Urevo, or isn't that what your um, rat rod turned into? No, I do have uh, my rat rod. Well, my rat rod is with Dave uh, from Radio Control Patrol. He still has it. Nah, He's doing you. some modification to it. Right. Now I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Um, he got into an accident, then a bunch of stuff happened, and he never got around to it. But uh, he is – I saw all the parts. Uh, he just has to put it together. He's starting to paint it and doing a paint video. Uh, he's doing that this week, I think. Uh, but I did buy a Revo for my son, so I do have one uh, Revo. Nice. Those things look like fun. Oh, they're they're, they're a blast. They're, mm -hmm. You can just do a back, back flip with them and all that. It, they, it, they're a hoop. Right.
Tony, do you have a small uh, E-Revo? Small little Revo? No? Dead, no. Nope, I do not. But some of the small guys you have for that are, well, not knockoff, but uh, some of the small ones you have are close to it, to uh, to the Revo, right? You have some that looks like uh, it? Like the JLB? Yeah. The Bison and the JLB 21 101s, those are kind of like it. Those run, um, they don't dip, don't really have a slipper on them, so... A little bit different control, but yeah, they're stupid, uh, overly powered, uh, four wheel drive, 10 scale truggies, I guess. Yeah, you know what? right, but, yeah, they're fun. I, yeah, they're I'm looking good. forward to running this actual Revo, it's definitely bigger. Um, oh. it's fun, and I hope, I hope you have uh, metal drive shafts for them. Yeah, if you're going to, that's what I've heard too, if you're going to run it full 3S or whatever, it's better to yeah, have metal drive shafts. Better to have metal dry shafts on them. I've got or 6S or uh, plastic. I think they're original. They're pretty old yeah, looking. Those are. Yeah, they are. Um, and I've got extras because when Debbie's RC World went out of business, I bought up a bunch of e Revo parts, which are floating around up here somewhere. You're going to be running what, 3S, 4S? What are you going to be running? Probably 4 Nice. Four? Four, uh, um, because it's dual battery, so uh, yeah, I'll probably do four S, two two S batteries, and then possibly six S. But I don't have any three S pairs. Oh, I do actually. I might do six S. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll see a big difference. With the stupid on six S though. It's it's more than I need. So I don't need the speed. I just want to be able to. I'm overpowering all the jumps I hit anyway uh, on most things at four S. As long as I can get the rotation that I want, um, then I'm good. Yeah. Uh, on 4S, you should be fine. When you start breaking things is when you go 6X, 6S. Yeah. Uh, that's when things start to break. Uh, one main thing, the reason the dry shaft breaks is that there's so much power. And when you go from forward to back, when you're doing those back flip and reflip again, yeah, you're doing rotation and it's tire rotation. And like you've noticed, those tires are huge. Uh, yeah. So when you hit the gas and you hit the brake, uh, just that that force has to go somewhere. Right. Uh, as soon as you break, uh, you you change your dry shaft to me metal. Something else is going to break. So which means you're going to put the HD diffs in there, uh, and then you have to change to your HD transmission. Uh, so when you go to six X six S, there's expensive. a lot of upgrades. You <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's not my intention. Again, I'm not looking to go crazy speed with it. Uh, yeah. I don't have enough room for it in my backyard, and I don't need it for those jumps uh, at the BMX trail. So, true. Uh, other than having the the wheel speed for doing some of that flip stuff, that might be the only reason I would do it. Um, but yeah, I'm not trying to do that much freestyle with it. I'm, I like doing a flip or whatever. I don't need to almost flip and then pull it back to level and then do you have the wheelie bar on that one tony the tracks the cells one that snaps right on under the fin no they've actually changed some of the stuff on here so it's got like these metal uh bumper on the front oh i see yep yep and like a big beefy metal bumper on the back That's a, yep. that'll work good so okay but, yeah i mean so you don't have the it's rusting uh, out. So you don't have the wheel bar at the back anymore. I can't put it there. He's saying no. You don't have it. Yeah. You do not have it. I don't think I need it. We'll see. Maybe I will. Well, it, it really helps because that truck is always on its own. It's always wheeling that truck. It's it, to me removing it. Grab one. That I usually snap off wheelie bars, though. That's the problem. Oh, tracks are all these cars tough. have them, and I break them all off. Tracks are pretty tough. Yeah. Well, on your uh, on your tracks is um, on your monster truck. Did you ever break that one? See, Tony, this is all it is. Is like a clip-on wheelie bar. Hold on, I'll put you in present. Okay, here we go. 
I think Tony's on present. All right, never mind. I'm just doing it again. Here you go. Just a chintzy yeah. tracks. It's a clip right on. There's a bracket underneath the wheelie or underneath the fin usually. Yeah, that it hooks looks up like my thing. stampede one, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I think Rustler has a similar one. Yeah, yeah. Similar to the stampede. I never broke that one. I mean, it's right. all like screws coming out, and all, it never broke though. It's always been attached. So their plastic is nice. I mean, that one actually it bends a lot, which is good. I think well, it hanging off like that. It's very flexible plastic. Right. Um, yeah, whoever's working over there at Traxxas, I think they they know their plastics pretty well because their stuff is um, pretty good. Yep. Cool. RPM. Even this nice. outlasted the uh, <laughs> the uh, shock shaft. This little plastic piece. Oh yeah. Uh, save it for your parts wall, broken parts wall. Yeah, I do. I keep the bodies. Nice. So we have a Bar Har Harbor basher that just joined us. And he's saying go 8S. Lots of fun. <laughs> on the what, the Revo? On the trucks. On the monster yeah. trucks he drives around, for sure. Yeah, you know, I think this, this ESC can handle 8S. This uh, scaler. Oh, I, I, I'm sure the ESC can handle it. But the problem is, can the rest of the truck handle the 8S? Oh no, 180 amp constant. <laughs> yeah, oh beast. man. Uh, yeah, it's censored. It's not waterproof, I don't think, which is a bummer for having a Traxxas vehicle that you can't like take out in the snow right now. I really wanted to run it, but we just got a bunch of snow, like 12 inches or so. Those and, dusty uh, motor shrouds work pretty good, at keeping a lot of it off anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't have those shroud, uh, use your wife's stocking. You can actually you use a stocking and actually do the same thing. Like cut off the end of it and then just kind of yeah. wrap it over the main area? Yeah, and you use Velcro around the body where the battery are. Put a two-way Velcro. Uh, one is on the uh, – and you can actually sew it on there. But you can actually use that. And um, it's a cheap way to make a shroud is to use uh, your wife's stocking. It's a good idea. Yeah, because the shroud the material is uh, like stocking or tent mesh. One of the things I've noticed about uh, brushed motors in the snow, especially these uh, the rebuildable Tekken motors, is uh, when you get in the snow and these things get covered in the snow, the I think the brushes, they soften up, so they wear out really quickly in the snow. That's part of the reason why I'm building these like shrouds here. It helped a lot on my dingo. When I was first plowing with that thing, I was going through brushes like crazy. But I finally figured out it's just the snow that softens it up. I think that's what it is. So, been working gotcha. good. Cool. Yeah, anything to help uh, protect from water or dust or whatever, it's always a good a good idea. I would help my X Max today because it bogged down after about uh, eight minutes or so, five to eight minutes. Playing in a not very long, and it wasn't too much. And I think I packed some snow in there, and it packed up around the ESC and everything. And then I, it was like half power. Now, which one was that? The X Max. Okay. I sure wondered, did I lose the battery? Did one of my batteries go out or what? But I don't know. It was Sometimes definitely a big loss of awesome. power. In the cold, the lipos, they, they start to lose their charge really quickly. If you put, like, a sock around them, it'll uh -huh. keep them warmer, and the, they'll last a whole lot longer. There you go. I don't usually have to deal with this cold stuff. Right. In the beach, you know. You guys with two-wheel drive <laughs> vehicles. and Yeah, no snow no plows. <laughs> yeah, no snow plows. Yeah, yeah, and how come you don't have sand paws? Don't you have beaches where you live? Yeah, but I refuse to take my truck there. It just gets in everything. All the salt. Tears yeah, it up. Salt. Up too. Yeah, the salt and the sand just tear it up. So I tried to get them. I was up at uh, – that's where I, I, there's um, a guy that 
to their beach place down in um, Outer Banks and uh, hit the dunes out there with the low C DVXLE, which seems actually perfect for that truck. Right. So I'm going to try and get, get that down there and see how it can handle. Oh, it's but, so fun. It's so fun. With the fast RC on the beach there, it's, yeah. just, it's just fun. Yeah. And it's going be worth the clean out, I guess. Oh, yeah. But, just uh, take a home yeah, field. That new Baja Ray that's coming out looks awesome. I'm really into these really big trucks right now for some reason. <laughs> that new yeah, low seat. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my god. I saw that Baja Ray. I thought it was just a running video, and then they put the uh, the other Baja Ray next to it, and I was like, "Holy cow, it's bigger!" Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge compared yeah. to a compared to. Earlier. I don't know why they didn't just go fifth scale and match it up and just do a one fifth scale electric five uh, T, but that we'd have part support and all that. But, yeah, I don't know. Try to make another scale popular. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's got to be it. I wonder why it's six scale, though. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like the eighth scale or tenth scale. Some are open, like a ninth scale. It's everybody's yeah. judgment, really. Yeah, even if the Revo, for what they call it, what, tenth scale? I think I think that might be eighth. Because I, I think the, the slash is supposedly tenth scale. Yeah, it's definitely bigger than the 10 scale ones and mm -hmm. both 10 scale vehicles. So I read somebody was saying 10, their 10 scale e revo on that, but it can't okay. be a 10 scale. Okay. So yeah, eighth would make more sense. Yeah. As far as the powertrain goes, too, I think. Mm hmm. Cool. Well, I've been on for two hours broadcasting, so I'm going to cut the, the video and stop broadcasting. But we'll stay on. That's the benefit of uh, being on the live chat. We can continue chatting. Uh, but uh, I'll end this uh, broadcast. And thank you, everybody, for showing up. Yeah, thanks, uh, guys. Everybody that jumped in. And uh, we'll see you next week uh, around Thursday, 9, 9.30. I'll let you know the time. Thanks for showing up. And please like and subscribe to the video. And see you next time.